Well, I feel like we're back in 2018 here on the Marky channel because this is two videos in a row talking about... Logan Paul. Because after posting his awful seven minute response to CoffeeZilla, he then went on impulsive to speak about it further. Now I actually haven't seen this video because as I'm recording this one, I've just uploaded my previous video and impulsive just came out maybe like I believe like 20 minutes ago. So we're gonna watch it for the first time and who knows, maybe Logan does apologize and does take accountability and it is a better response than the last, but I'd be pretty shocked. But before we do get into that, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so because I'm trying to hit 400,000 subscribers on this channel and we're quite a bit off right now, so any help would be bloody lovely. And if you watch my video, hopefully, hopefully you're seeing this. The guy is good. He is a very good storyteller. Sure. Have you seen that? Very, very manipulative. Oh, right. Okay, right. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a compliment for a second. I was like, oh, okay. Logan Paul's actually taking a different stance. He's praising CoffeeZilla on his series. No, he just called him manipulative instead. Which would be all fine and dandy in most cases of YouTube drama, but the bloke showed so much evidence. It's an hour's worth of content in a three-part series showing every bit of evidence at every stage in the situation. Like... I don't know how you can use this as an excuse. And on top of that, you haven't really proved anything he said wrong. The only decent point I thought you made in the last video was that the phone call could be illegal. And to me, that's not even a big deal. But I was just like, right, in the eyes of the law, maybe he's got a leg to stand on. But then I posted that video and it came to my attention that that's not even a good point. Because with the laws in Texas, which is where CoffeeZilla's from, he's completely fine in that regard. So you actually had no good excuses. And he's good. It's, it's He's built an entire career off it. Sometimes he's more impartial than not. I think he probably has an inherent bias against me. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Sometimes he's impartial, but when he's talking about me, he's just completely wrong. Has to be a bias. Look, I'll be honest. I've watched CoffeeZilla series, obviously, and I feel like if he did have a bias against Logan, he could have went at Logan 10 times more. He was more than fair. He could have ignored all the other parties involved and just focus on Logan Paul and then talk about how CryptoZoo is such a bad scam. But instead, he focused primarily on the two criminals that Logan Paul hired and then even said that Logan Paul didn't actually take any money from CryptoZoo. So if anything, I think he's been very, very fair to you. But for some reason, you still have a problem. Which unfortunately has repercussions. If you are perpetuating uh, yeah. falsehood. The lawsuit, eh? And, and, and it's affecting someone's business and reputation, and it's affecting the wrong person's business and reputation, that person may take action. So See, this just makes him look so much more guilty, and I don't understand how he doesn't realize this, because he hasn't disputed any of CoffeeZilla's points, let's be honest here. And all of a sudden, he's just like, right, defamation, go to court, I'm gonna sue you. It makes you look so guilty. Definitions and the two things that are at play. One of them being a scam, the other one being def defamation. <laughs> it's Mike to which save the day. Can be libel or slander. If someone scams a person or, or an organization, they deceive them in order to get something valuable for them, especially money. That is the definition of scam. All right, okay. So what he's about to say, I'm pretty sure, is because Logan didn't make any money from said scam, the definition that's in the dictionary means he didn't scam anyone. Lord of shite. He created the scam, then hired criminals to work on the scam, and they made millions and millions of dollars while the investors lost thousands of dollars each. Like, it's a scam. Don't even try it. My, my first question, and this question was answered in his series. How much money did you make? Five second blip that was a part of a, a probably hour long of documentary, you know, filmmaking, was how much money did you make off the sale of the coin. Oh God, or, tell or, us. Or, or off crypto. I know you're dying to tell How much us. Money did you make? Yeah, this seems to be uh, the biggest misconception. It's not a misconception. He literally said it in the series, and then Mike's like, "Oh, he only said it for five seconds." What do you want him to do? Do you want him to make a half an hour video talking about how Logan Paul didn't get any money from this? Where he's just like, right, Logan Paul got no money from this. That's zero dollars. Not even one dollar. Not two dollars. He actually got zero dollars. And just carry on talking about it. It's a five second sentence. That's why it felt so quick. Disappointing that that part was glossed over so quickly. Um, made no money off CryptoZoo. Never sold the token. Jeff never sold the token only lost money trying to make things right. Trying to make things right means that he didn't speak to any of the investors who lost thousands of dollars for over a year up until CoffeeZilla posted his video. Like, 
Logan, you're not the fucking victim here. He's trying to play the sympathy card over and over again. And I'm sorry. It's impossible to feel sorry for Logan in this. No money was made. No tokens were sold. Uh, yeah, there was. There was like, what, 6 million for Jake the Crypto King and 1.7 million for Eddie Albanez or whatever the fuck his name is. Like, yeah, a lot of money was made, Logan. You don't need to lie. Back to the flip side really quick. To me, once I heard that, that seemed just like a... a a kill shot to this entire thing. Yeah, if you're fucking stupid, it might seem like a kill shot. Like, Mike, use your brain for fuck's sake. Just because Logan didn't make any money out of this personally doesn't mean that tons of people weren't scammed over his creation because he didn't do his due diligence and hired criminals to run his crypto project who took millions of dollars from innocent people. He created the scam. I empathize. I totally totally see why people are frustrated okay i'm fucking frustrated okay i've been frustrated for over a year so frustrated that he went on to create two more crypto projects and abandoned the one that people lost thousands of dollars on i mean we're not even talking about dink donk here while we made no money on the project which i think kills the scam narrative immediately nope nope no it doesn't matter Th there is more explaining to do what was your intent with crypto zoo as a project I really- <laughs> Wait, let me just guess. He's gonna be like, oh, you know, it was like a passion project. I wanted to create this really cool game where you can crossbreed animals and create a gorilla kitty. Like, that's my passion. It was gonna be the next big thing. It was my first foray <laughs> into creating a project on the blockchain. My intent was to to to, to make the next Pokemon, essentially, you know, <laughs> on the blockchain. Yeah, no, it's uh, definitely gonna be the next Pokemon, mate. You photoshopped elephant trunks onto pandas. Like, you're not creating the next Pokemon, fucking hell. I put, I put seven months of my time, energy, effort, all of it, all of it into this project. And when shit hit the fan, it was, it was devastating. It was heartbreaking. Yeah, we saw how devastated it was for you with the text messages where you were absolutely fuming that someone managed to find the coin when you tried to sneakily stealth launch it so no one could find out that it was out, but you could get it at a discounted price. But then as soon as one other person found the coin, you were fuming because you wanted all the discount. Like throughout all these responses, and I mean, we will see if he does address it in this, but he hasn't addressed the text messages at all. And they're the most like damning piece of evidence throughout the whole series. Like it makes it very clear that Logan Paul knew he was up to no good. Was the intent to make money? I mean, I, I guess maybe eventually, like if you're running a business, I'd assume any in, in intent is to, to, to make money off of it. But like eventually, I mean, that makes it seem as if it's going to be a project that lasts years, but none of your projects have lasted years. You notoriously create new crypto projects and then leave them in the dust like a few months later. You've done it countless amount of times now. I haven't heard him mention Dink Doink in forever, before the CoffeeZilla video, he wasn't mentioning CryptoZoo anymore, God knows what happened to Liquid Marketplace. I guess 99 Originals was maybe the only crypto project he did seem to put a lot of effort into, but other than that, they've all been abandoned. People seem to to really dis discount the art, which I- <laughs> The art. <laughs> I felt truthfully was, uh, wasn't fair. Um, <laughs> what? I was kind of in the middle. Fuck it out. Right, okay, Mike has somewhat of a brain. What do you mean it wasn't fair? You just took two Adobe stock images of animals, cut certain features of one animal, and stuck it on the other. That's not art. The thing is, right, if I know I can create that on Photoshop, and yeah, I'm not exactly the worst of Photoshop, but I'm nowhere near, like, unbelievable of Photoshop, but if I can do that, then it's not worth selling for the thousands of dollars you sold it for. It was very do you, do you know okay. How, do you it know was how very hard basic. It is? Yes, I do you know, know how and, hard and, and, it is and, and, and to, let me, to, to merge animals that that do exist into an animal that doesn't exist and make it look. It's not that hard, especially when you're just using two images and cutting features off and putting on another one. It's really not that difficult. If you take an animal from CryptoZoo and like a fucking picture of a monkey wearing a hat and go ask like someone on the street, like, hey, which of these is more captivating to you? Something tells me the, the, the animal that doesn't exist that looks like a real hybrid animal is probably going to win. I mean, if someone came up to me on the street and showed me two pictures like that and said, which one is more captivating to you, I would walk away because I'd be like, what type of drugs are you on? What question is that? Hey, I just want to get your opinion. Do you like this monkey with the hat or do you like this gorilla kitty? Hey, I just need to know. They'd both be shit to answer your question. But if the picture of the monkey wearing a hat was actually created by an artist, and it was maybe hand-drawn, like you tried saying that these pictures were, then I would feel like that was more impressive, if that answers your question. They're, they're, they at least 
probably have to agree that it falls within industry, like in in the the, the area of industry standards for NFTs at the time. I mean, look at some of the other projects. I mean, I mean, yeah, but Logan's a multi multi millionaire and he keeps going on about how he put millions into this business and all he created was stock photos. Like, why is that so hard to understand? That's now, why I whether it's, whether that's it's why I found or whatever, this, that's it why was I found this argument a little. F I felt that one I felt wasn't quite fair. Shut up, man. That was the most like point blank piece of evidence he showed that these images a shit like it's undisputable i think it was shined in a bad light i think if it didn't have the uh the negative outline right okay right we don't care about the animals anymore let's get to the actual details over here are people that root for you that look at you like somebody they want to be like they want to achieve like and so when they invested in your project and they're they're, remember, they don't have our lifestyle, so they're working paycheck to paycheck. Oh, is he going to say a good point here? So when like they he go, is. fuck yeah, Logan's involved in this. I know it's going to win because I've watched this guy win, win, and win, and win. And I want to be like this fucking guy. So I'm going to invest my hard-earned money. From their point of view, I get your guys' point of view because you're dealing with a legal team. You're dealing with all the people that did you wrong. But from their stance, they go, how dare you go and open up two other projects yes. when I just wasted my hard-earned money on something that I believed you would do. Good question or good statement or whatever it was. I don't care. It was good. That's exactly the point here. And it seems to be what Logan has just ignored throughout all this. He hasn't said sorry once. He hasn't apologized to the investors. He hasn't even spoke to them for the best part of a year. But he seems so defensive that people are going at him when the real victims here are the people that invested. And like George just said there, these people aren't multi multi millionaires for the most part, like Logan Paul. These are people who can't afford to be losing thousands and thousands of dollars. And yeah, you could say it's a, a bad investment on their part, but they trusted their favorite creator. They trusted Logan Paul because on the outside, he looks like he'd be a really good businessman. I mean, he's a multi-millionaire, right? So imagine how they must feel when the project is just abandoned after they put so much money into the project and then they later find out that two criminals made millions off it. Like, they must be heartbroken. The answer is fucking heartbreaking, George. I'll get oh, emotional okay. speaking about it just now, just right now, but this is what broke me. People relied on me to create a project and when shit wasn't working out and I found out the extent of just how bad things were behind the scenes, I had to rely on my team. I crumbled internally and the advice was while actual legal process was going on because of criminal investigation taking place that CoffeeZilla highlighted in his series, I had to stay silent and for a fucking year. But you don't have to make a public statement about it. You don't have to make a big expose on the people behind the scenes, but you should at least communicate with the investors. They literally invested money in your project. They deserve to know what's happening. And you don't need to give them names. You don't even need to give them very key details. All you need to say is, look, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. It's gonna take a bit longer than expected to get this project up and running. I just wanna let you know, I'm not abandoning it. I'm still thinking about this project and we are gonna make some movement. It's just gonna take a bit longer. That's all you needed to do. You needed to give the investors the reassurance, but instead you left them in the dust and left them questioning in a discord that you chose not to speak in that's the problem but they where don't are see we that. at they don't see that that's crazy the engineer stole the code who was hired by a fucking con man a guy that i found out to be a con man a guy that i had trusted not a, not just a guy that i had trusted a guy that billionaires had trusted a guy that fooled the mormon church and the new york yankees but yeah that's you not doing your due diligence like if coffeezilla found this out then why couldn't you? You're the one creating the project. You should be putting more research in it than CoffeeZilla is. But for some reason you didn't. And the advisor, again, that I trusted was selling against my buyers, people that actually wanted to play this game. The person you trusted, I'm assuming it's talking about Jake the Crypto King, shouldn't have been trusted in the first place. You've already done business with him with the Pokemon boxes, and you definitely knew that he's notoriously known for scamming people in the Pokemon community because millions of people have seen videos talking about how he's a scammer and you still trusted him. Like, I'm sorry, I just don't like the excuses. But fuck CoffeeZilla, fuck you, no, no joke. What do we do for the people that were fucked? I mean, not really fuck CoffeeZilla because the fact that he spoke about this is the only reason that it might now get made right. But I do agree, obviously the people we should be focusing on the most are the victims. So let's see what Logan's gonna do. I and my team, Jeff, and I'd like you to sit in Jeff, 
are are working. We are at work and have been working to make this game. And that's part of the solution. Mm. Deliver the fucking project, mm. right? And that's never stopped. So why did you go on to create more crypto projects? You created 99 originals, which meant that you had to be away, not working on other things for 99 days, taking Polaroid pictures. So there's no way that you can be working unbelievably hard on CryptoZoo at that time. And by the way, 99 days is a long time. It's like nearly a third of a year, but quite a bit under a third of a year, but it's a long time, so you couldn't have been working overly hard. What you should have done is fully focus on CryptoZoo if you were working so hard behind the scenes to make things right and not create 99 originals and not create Liquid Marketplace and focus on the project that you already have people investing money in that have had no returns. That was always the prerogative. CoffeeZilla making a series or not, the game the game is being made. He he just assumed we gave I up I don't on know it, if I believe that. Which is, not, which is not true. The answer is yes, George. I'm not a fucking scammer. I, 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 I have the best intentions mm. and I will I will make this right for the people who believed in me. You know how adamant I was about fixing all of this sure. and making this right. Sure, sure. And for a year. Sure. I mean, he's his manager, so it's hard to take his word for it. I mean, he's the one who literally got told in a phone call that Eddie Albanez or Ibanez or whatever the fuck his name is, is a criminal and a con man. And he just didn't believe any of it and he was like ah oh, well he seems great to me so i don't trust him for a single slightest and then coffeezilla series came out and i fucking called you guys and i said i'm making a statement i don't give a fuck yep i i i spent days writing this thing really days. god that's even more worrying that you spent days working on it and it was still shit fucking hell i found out things watching his series like like dude i was at the airport um when i watched the part where he said jake's had stolen of course. Six, I was like, what? Six million dollars. I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, that just shows like how little you've really looked into it. If CoffeeZilla could find out exactly how much he's maybe stolen, maybe it's a little bit more, maybe it's a little bit less, but who knows? But he's stolen millions of dollars. So why haven't you found out these details? Why hasn't your team found out these details? I mean, all CoffeeZilla really did, and I'm not taking away from him because the series is unbelievably good, but he just tracked his wallets and checked how much money was transferring between wallets like you could have done that when you're on the top rope at wwe and you're going like this after a crazy show and the audience is going crazy when you're bringing prime into the table and people are drinking it being like how the fuck is this product this good it's not very good by the way we're watching a superhero kill these side quests half day after day after day after day none of these quests would be completed without your team and when you win we celebrate together what I need this team to start doing is when you guys take a dip, you gotta stop pointing the fingers at each other. And also maybe don't hire criminals to the team. That'll be a good start. Like, I'm sorry, but if you just hired one criminal to the team, it's already a bit worrying, but we could be a bit like, oh, maybe he didn't know. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But you hired Zach Kelling, who was known as Z in CoffeeZilla series, who's a criminal. You hired Eddie Ibanez, who's a con man and criminal. You also hired Jake the Crypto King, who's a scammer and criminal. Come on, Logan. Fucking hell. The key people in your project that didn't have that many people in it to start with are criminals. That, that mission statement that I've had since I was eight fucking years old posting online was tainted by this dude who had an agenda, who, who, is, who is normally oh. very good at his job, but had an agenda. I <laughs> He's normally very good at his job until he spoke about me and then he's wrong. Literally everyone says the same thing, man. Like everyone loves commentary channels and like investigative channels and all this stuff until the thing is pointed at them. Then they hate them. I was talking to Jake about this over Christmas break. I'm glad I got some time to spend with my brother. He's like, I was like, are you aware of, of, of what's happening right now? He goes, Dude, I skipped past the videos. Like, I know you didn't fucking scam anyone. Yeah, Jake Paul's very trustworthy. Like, he hasn't scammed people in the past. We've given Zilla fuck part four. He's probably going to milk the shit out of this. He's probably going to talk to more more people who lost money. He's probably going to milk the shit out of this by speaking to the people who lost money. How is that milking it in any way, shape, or form? They lost money because of you. There would be nothing to milk if you didn't do what you did. But with CoffeeZilla doing the right thing with creating this series and helping out the victims, you've now decided to actually be like, okay, I'll try and make things right. 
So clearly he's not just milking it, he's actually helped the victims, unlike you. Genuine about what they're saying, because he doesn't verify backgrounds or, like I said, substantiate any evidence, so... Doesn't substantiate any evidence. He made a three-part series with every piece of evidence he could have possibly had. Like, Logan, you're just speaking absolute shit. In fact, in your response, you came with next to no evidence. So it's weird coming from you. That's what I would do if I were him. I'd milk the shit out of this, and like I said, he's probably going to. He's good. He's very good. I love how that's F1's excuse when they do something wrong. Like, when someone's going to speak about your wrongdoing, Doings, they're all of a sudden milking it and clout chasing like it's the most classic excuse on youtube misinformation that this was any sort of con or scam the more i have for the lawsuit that i am filing the defamation lawsuit that is fucking happening because this is wrong this is fucking wrong you know what's wrong logan you creating a scam that lost people thousands of dollars because they trusted you. I think that's a bit worse than Coffeezilla making videos pointing out the fact that you created this scam. Don't you think? Yeah. I do I do thank Coffeezilla for 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 shining a light on what even he highlighted and made in his years worth of research and a three-part series is that this situation is so fucked, so beyond fucked. So you're thankful for Coffeezilla, but you're now suing him. Someone make it make sense. He just messed up by pointing the finger 100% at me and saying that there was any sort of fraud. Or he didn't point the finger 100% at you. He literally went through every single person and said what they did wrong. And by the way, it made it very clear that the criminals that you hired were the worst people involved. It just so happens that you hired them. Why did you block him on Twitter? It's like a little gnat. It's like a little fucking annoying gnat and it bothers me. He won, he won, he won, he got to me, bro. He's the, mo he's the most formidable opponent I've had. I'm not kidding. Guys. Does that mean I'm an annoying gnat? Because I'm fucking blocked on Twitter. <laughs> there we go. Callum Mark is a formidable opponent, clearly. No, in actual reality, I just replied to one of his tweets with that picture where his hair's all pulled back and you can see his receding hairline, and then he blocked me. Clearly wasn't a fan. The guy's good. He's very he, smart. He, very smart. He manipulates the and twists the truth just the way he wants to get his people to believe a certain thing. He's good. And that's why you're suing him. Because you know you can't prove what he said wrong because he is very good. So you, now you're just suing him for defamation and leaking a phone call. I don't make money off this platform. I'm doing God's work. I'm doing justice, by the way. Go sign up to my Patreon. <sighs> Go join my Patreon, we're gonna- God, who was the audience member who laughed there? Because this wasn't funny in the slightest. He created a Patreon so people could support his work because he clearly put a ridiculous amount of effort in his work and the editing is ridiculous, so God knows how many people he has working on that, but it's an editing level that I definitely wouldn't be able to do. So, who cares who's creating a Patreon? I feel like he deserves it. Uh, you see the behind the scenes of my $10 million studio. $10 million studio? You got $10 million? Logan, it's a joke. Oh, right, you know what? When he actually made his original response and he did the whole, like, in your $10 million studio and then showed a green screen, I thought it was a bit weird. I was like, surely Logan doesn't actually believe that Coffeezilla's saying that seriously and he thinks it's a bit of an expose that's in a green screen. But maybe he does? Where did that money go? <laughs> I, mm, I don't think so, Al. I think I think he might be saying that sarcastically. He or he rented it. So, so you're saying he... So you're saying he embellished or like rounded up a No, I think he just says it sarcastically. It's like a joke. It's But it's it's in his descriptions on his Patreon, which I joined. Oh my God, he actually thinks Coffeezilla says that seriously. Logan Paul, you are a moron. Coffeezilla isn't trying to trick people into thinking his green screen is an actual $10 million studio. You idiot. Obviously it's a green screen. Anyone with two fucking eyes can say it's a green screen. Jesus Christ, Logan. Why you took that so seriously? You know what? That's his worst argument for how all of this. I don't even care about the scamming anymore that is stupid but yeah either way that is the end of them talking about the crypto scam they then go on to talk about how logan was very insensitive towards george about his religion which is another clip i haven't even spoke about publicly but it's a terrible terrible clip uh yeah logan hasn't been great recently has he but yeah either way let me know what you think about logan's newest response it feels the same as the first response just in a bit more detail still making excuses hardly taking any accountability but hopefully he does make things right, and hopefully he does carry on to maybe create Crypto Zoo in a good way that will make people their money back, or he just refunds them. Who knows? Just, I hope the victims get their money's worth, that's all. But yeah, anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like down below. Subscribe if you are new. If you want to let me know what topics to talk about in future videos, the best way to do that's on my Instagram. It's at Calamarkey, and it's always linked in the description. And until the next one, I'll see you guys in a bit. Alright, goodbye. <laughs>